You may have noticed the brochures this year and also the previous screen that uh, pointed out the open doors and Brother Marlon Rotana, all the way from the country of Panama, designed those for us. He's very good when it comes to technology and designing things. And he is in the country of Panama trying to establish a new work. We teach at the, in the missions program the idea of becoming indigenous. That is, being, after a number of years, where you can be self-supporting. And so Brother Marlon Rattana, with that concept, is trying to start a new work with the idea that eventually it will become self-supporting. Of course, he's got to have some support prior to that. And he is in much need of support. There was another congregation at Panama that was willing to use him and say as a preacher, but they wanted him not really to preach, best to do door knocking all the time. And while we can appreciate door knocking, we know that all preachers would really want to do more preaching. And so that's what he is uh, trying to do. And so he is in need of support. And I told him that I would mention that as some of the works and some of these works that you may see, uh, you may want to be a, a part of it. And many of you are parts of it because all of us working together, helping to spread the gospel uh, throughout the world, it takes those who can go, those who can help send them to go. And, you know, when Paul said in the book of Philippians, or when he's writing to the church at Philippi, he said, not that I desire uh, your money per se, but rather that fruit may, that may be born to your account. Uh, and so by supporting good works, you're a part of that work. That's the way I also feel about the presentation that I'm going to do now as it relates to the work of Four Seas Bible College in Singapore. This congregation is a part of that support, and so it's bearing fruit uh, to their account. There are individuals also who are supportive of this, and it's a, a multifaceted work in many ways. Been in the brotherhood for quite a number of years, and it does require then our support. Now, you might be asking, okay, you're speaking about Four Seas Bible College, so why do we see Walmart up on the screen? And the reason why you see Walmart up on the screen is because some of the places that we travel, which are forbidden to preach the gospel, yet we find that we have Western stores, in like in this particular uh, scene that you see right here, Walmart. Now... They don't have the Great Commission to go into all the world and put Walmart in every country, uh, make it available for every creature. But yet, we find that they seem to have that uh, concept that they want to go into all the world. They want everybody to have an opportunity to shop at Walmart, no matter where you may be. Now, I will say this, in some of these countries, they have clearance that we don't have. Uh, the, the government wants them in there, and so consequently they go in there and they hire their laborers. I might have mentioned to you before walking into one, and I think they thought I might have been Sam Walton because they don't know they'd ever seen a, a Westerner uh, before, and what am I doing in Walmart? Not only do we have Walmart, but also if I can get my clicker to working here. Hey, guys. Uh, you might notice there is a Kentucky Fried Chicken. Well, you can survive doing mission work <laughs> as a Westerner. If you can shop at Walmart and eat chicken, you, you're okay. Kentucky Fried Chicken. But there again, it just when we see these things, it's just reminiscent or reminds us that just as they would take their products into the world, there's a great need of taking God's product, the gospel of Christ, into all the world. And, of course, we can do that. These places are filled with idolatry where we go, oftentimes. Whether it's Buddhism, Taoism, and very other isms uh, that may be there. Uh, this is one that where Brother Tim and I were last year. We took a photo of uh, them. But here, as they are praying, uh, they want a family. And so here's a God of fertility. And so they want to pray. And I remember that when the Apostle Paul saw a city wholly given to idolatry, how did he feel about that? 
Well, his spirit was stirred within him, wasn't it? And so he began to preach to the people about the one true God. And there are many people today in these countries then that need to know about the one true God. Most people live in the Far East regions of the world. We have about 300 million people in the USA. In Asia, there's 4.427 billion people. So we have about 3 billion, no, I'm sorry, about 300 million. And in other words, most of the population of this world is outside of the United States. China, for an example, has, what was say, 1.3, 1.4 billion. Uh, then also India has about 1.2 billion people then you add these other countries that are around them the much smaller some of them smaller than we but yet there's so many countries we find that oh nearly four and a half billion of the 7.6 billion people of the world are living in the far east consequently then we cannot neglect the far east if we're thinking about taking the gospel to every creature because many of them live outside of course, our uh, territory. In the Far East, there are 53 nations with some 2,197 different languages. That's a lot of languages, isn't it? Uh, some of these countries have, with that one country, for an example, may have many different languages within it. Uh, and we could talk about that for a while. But wouldn't it be great if you had a city where they spoke different languages, but yet their common language was English? Well, we need more gospel preachers, brethren. There's a tremendous task ahead of us. We need more workers. We need more people with the idea of dedicating themselves to preaching the gospel here in the U.S. or outside the U.S. We need people who will dedicate themselves to taking the gospel uh, into all the world. I'm amazed that the Apostle Paul, how that he traveled, he mentions in the book of Romans, how that he had traveled as far as Jerusalem up to Illyricum with the gospel of Christ. And if you just took a straight shot, you would see how far that is from Jerusalem all the way up to Illyricum. But he didn't go as the crow flies because he went throughout all minor, uh, Asia Minor preaching the word, but yet it had taken him uh, all the way up to a lyricum with the gospel of Christ. And so he knew then the responsibility that was his. So we need more people who will dedicate themselves to gospel preaching. And we want to encourage these students that we have to be servants of the Lord in order to not promote self, but to preach the gospel of Christ and to dedicate themselves uh, to taking the gospel into all the world. The first evangelist in the, to the Far East was Brother uh, Ira Rice Jr., who decided that he was going to go into Singapore in order to preach the gospel of Christ. I think some of the slides, for some reason, are not showing up on uh, our, we're crossing systems, I suppose. But be that as it may, he was from 1917 until, you know, in 2001. He established the Church of Christ in Singapore in 1954. Uh, I wish you would take the time to read his book about him having to get into Singapore. Now, he did not go uh, <clears throat> based on somebody came up and gave him the money. He didn't have the money to go. He had spent uh, many months and year, uh, up to a year or more trying to raise support to go. Uh, he had opposition in that. One brother who didn't want the church overseeing it was fighting against it. Brother Rice would go and speak at a congregation. Then he would call that congregation behind Brother Rice and they would cut off his support. So he didn't, he had to work with that. And uh, eventually Sister Rice said, well, there's one more thing you can do. He said, I've done all I know to do. Sister Rice said, there's one more thing you can do. He said, well, what is it? She said, you can order the tickets and we can go. He didn't have the money. It was going to cost $2,000 for him to take his wife and family 
to Singapore. Now, that's a long time ago, 1954. He said, I went, he said, I went down. You go down to the travel agent, I guess, in those days. He said, and I ordered the tickets. Didn't have any money. Ordered the tickets. A day or so later, he went to the mailbox, and he said there was one letter. He'd been going around trying to raise the support. He said there was one envelope. Not many, just one. And he said, and I took that envelope and there was a check inside that envelope with a note to it. The check was for $2,000 and the note was from an elder. And he said, you have been trying for many, for a long time to go to Singapore, take this money, buy the tickets and go. He said, if you ever can repay the money, it would be appreciated, but it's not a loan. So if you don't, if you don't ever raise the money, don't worry about paying it back. And he said, so I took that money and I went. But guess what happened about three to four days prior to time to get on the plane? One of the children came down with the measles. And he said he took them to the doctor, confirmed, got the measles. What do you do? Well, he talked to the travel agent and the travel agent said if I were you I'd put a blanket over that baby I'd get on the plane and I wouldn't tell anybody that this child had the measles until I got way over in the ocean somewhere <laughs> over the ocean so he said that's what we did he said we wrapped that child up in a blanket and we sat down on that plane and we took off and when we left all the land and all we could see was water down below us we got out over the ocean he said I took that blanket off and said why well, Veda I believe this child's got the measles <laughs> well so that that's what it took to get the gospel over to uh, Singapore in 1954 and he still didn't get the support that he needed there's some people who said they would support, but then they never did. And he had to come home after a year to raise the support to go back over there. So what I'm trying to tell us today is it's not always easy to do this. You really have to be dedicated. I heard him say there were others who were supposed to join him in this work, but they could never raise the support. But he said this was an important point. How is it that I was able to raise eventually enough support to stay there, but they were not? He said, among other things, he said, here is my philosophy. I refuse to be defeated. He said, now that separates the missionaries. If you are dedicated to doing something and you refuse to be defeated, you will, if it doesn't work this way, you're going to do it another way. If it doesn't work that way, you're going to keep on. He said, but most people don't do that. They get defeated and then they quit. And so, but Brother Rice said he would not quit. And so he continued, and what he wanted to do, and the reason why he chose Singapore, which is building me up to Four Seas Bible College, is because he had made known that he was looking for a country or a city that was multilingual, spoke different languages, multi-ethnic backgrounds. But the common language was English, because he said if we had that, then we could go over there and teach them and the gospel could be spread throughout the world. And a man in California said, well, you're talking about my home city. He said, where are you from? He said, Singapore. Brother Rice had never really heard much about Singapore. So he looked it up and what uh, material he had on it, but he found out that was it. And that's the way that it still is today. It is multilingual. And it is also multi-ethnic, but the common language is English. They may speak three or four languages or more, but they all converse also in English. And so he established the church in Singapore. Not a big place geographically, although it has something like 8 million people uh, in it now. Uh, so it has a lot of people on this small island. Uh, but it is also the most expensive place to live in the world now. It has gone from third world to first world, okay? And they have a fantastic system, evidently, for to bring it up to that. But he, he had foresight then, not only establishing the church in Singapore, but after a number of years, in 1965, I believe it was, he started Four Seas Bible College, where people could come from all those different countries in the Far East, 
if they knew English and they could be trained in English, then they could go back to their home countries. And the Singaporean government makes sure they do that. They have to pay something like $2,000 to get them in there. The government holds on to that money and then gives it back to uh, Four Seas Bible College when those people go back home. There's, with a small island with that many people, they don't need more people uh, living in Singapore, and so they want to make sure that the people are going home. So he established what is known as Four Seas Bible College. It is located in the area of Singapore, all of that small, all that bottom part, is indeed the island of Singapore, and over on the, the west side is Jerong, and that is the area wherein uh, uh, the Bible College exists. And you can see the opportunities that are for us, if you were to look right above Malaysia, I'm sorry, right below Malaysia, that is the island of Singapore, and you see all the country above it, and here you see are some graduates where they are located. And also on my PowerPoint, all the names of those countries are there, but it's not up there for some reason. Uh, that's a Houdini PowerPoint evidently. <laughs> Why Four Seas Bible College? Four Seas Bible College, because the Chinese had a saying that within the four seas, all men are brethren. I don't know why they said four seas, but they did. Four seas, I guess that has to do with the idea in all directions. So within the four seas, all men are brethren. And I got the thumb up from Brother Philip said, no, I got that right. So, uh, and, and so that is true. But I like to think of it as within the four seas, we're all brethren in Christ, in Jesus Christ. And how then we need to take the gospel then. So that's the reason for four seas Bible college on the history of the college. It started in 1965 as the Malaysian Christian College. This is at the old Momain building. This is on Momain Road in Singapore. Brother Rice happens to be in that photo. And here we find then the Malaysian Christian College got started. Later on, it's going to change its names to Four Seas Bible College. Uh, but then later on, uh, they moved in 1969 to another piece of property in Singapore on uh, Pongol Road. This was a very beautiful property. And you know that Brother Rice had a lot of foresight. Here's a very beautiful, right next to the China Sea, South China Sea. And so you would have the breeze off of the sea blowing in and just a beautiful place to have a college. But, you know, Singapore said, the government said, we believe we want that property. And so they exercised their right of eminent domain, which says you've got to take your buildings off of our property. And we will pay you whatever that is worth. They didn't steal it from them, but they uh, paid them a certain amount of money. But we had to move. And so they moved from over the Pongol uh, area, Pongol Roll, to where we are now. This is the property that is now on, that is the building that is owned by uh, the Jerome Church of Christ. The top building uh, currently is owned by the uh, Four Seas Bible College. On the bottom floor, is the Chinese congregation on the and uh, Mandarin Chinese on the uh, second floor? We have the Singaporean congregation, which speaks English or as they say, Singlish. And then on the top floor is Four Seeds Bible College. And so uh, again, this we only own the building; they own the property. The government owns the property, uh, and they want you to be productive. Uh, here is the area uh, of the influence of the uh, Four Seas Bible College with all of those different countries. Again, on my PowerPoint, I had the names of those countries in there. And for some reason, uh, Houdini took them out. Or some, somebody did. But anyway, you can see where we have graduates. There have been, a, I believe we have graduates of Four Seas Bible College now in 19 different countries. I call this then the mutual fund of evangelism. When people support Four Seas Bible College, that's a great way of supporting world missions because it's not just one place. It's not just like supporting India, not just like supporting China. You're supporting all of those places, and I think what a great opportunity that is for us. This is one of the uh, students. I think he's graduated now, Brother Jerusalem. 
Uh, keep in mind, English is not their first language. And some of them, when they come there, do not speak English very well. They know some of it, but they must learn very quickly. They have to hit the ground running, as we say. And so they learn to speak in English. They preach in English. And I noticed that Brother Jerusalem, he's speaking in chapel. And they speak, as I've said to the Forest Hill congregation when I've given a report, without notes. And they speak in English, and they have all of this memorized then. And so uh, these are dedicated students to be able to do this. You would hate to have to try to preach in Mandarin Chinese and maybe try to alliterate it in, <laughs> in that. And so on. that would be very difficult. But he's back in the Philippines, by the way. He is from the Philippines. Here's just a slide of one of the lectures that we go to. Every year we have a lectureship in Singapore, and we're going to talk about that in just a little bit more. But the people who gather, this is inside that third story, or that second story, rather, of the Jerome Church of Christ. And we come from America. People come from China. People come from India. People come from Australia. A host of different countries for this, this important week. And some of you have been with us over there. They have an MRT system where you can get around in that city very easily. Uh, you can buy a ticket and you can travel. You can actually get off of the plane, get on the subway, and go anywhere in Singapore you want to go. You wouldn't even have to have the taxi if you did not want it, if you don't mind walking to the MRT. They have a transit system then that is just, the engineering of that is just mind-boggling as to how, how they do all of that, but they are very good in their engineering. You'd see that in their productivity and their buildings, their banking. They've actually gone to a financial uh, institution, as it were, the whole uh, island just about it. And I guess that's why they've become so prosperous. At Four Seas Bible College, we train men to be preachers of the gospel of Christ. We train women to be teachers of children uh, and women. We have ladies, for an example, that will come from Vietnam. And they say, we want to teach the children. Or as one lady said, we want to teach the street children. They just are out there and maybe uh, they want to learn English and they want to learn. And so they teach them English, but they teach them also uh, the gospel of Christ. And so future generations to come. And so we have women who come there. It's a two-year study, free, free tuition, free accommodations. Uh, there's a place where we have them uh, to stay. And then also daily meals. There's a stipend that they receive. They can go out back and buy their meals at the, well, the hawking centers out back, uh, the food courts that are out back. And so they can eat, if they wanted to, three meals a day uh, out there. And it's relatively cheap uh, for them to eat. So they do that. But this is, these are the courses that you can see. I'm not going to read through every one of those, but in the first year program, you have the Old Testament survey, and then Genesis, Exodus, and Deuteronomy, Hebrew history, and you could keep on going. Then in the second year, you move right on over until you see they have a good Bible knowledge by the time that they leave uh, Four Seas Bible College or Four Seas College of the Bible and Mission. Among the faculty and the staff has been and currently is Brother Peter Chen, we mentioned him earlier. Brother uh, Chen goes back to the days of Klang, Malaysia, when he was working with Jim Dearman. Uh, would that have been in the 70s? I guess it would have 80s uh, at that point in time. I first met Brother Peter Chen personally in Thailand. I was in Chiang Mai, Thailand, speaking on a lectureship. They used to have what is known as the Asian Bible Lectureship many years ago, and it would rotate from various countries, okay? And some of you may have participated in some of those. Well, this year it was in Thailand. So my wife and I went to Chiang Mai, Thailand, and uh, well, I met Brother Peter Chen. You know, we talk about open doors. That opened another door. When I went to Chiang Mai, Thailand, Brother Peter Chen came to me and he said, we would like for you to come to Klang, Malaysia and teach personal evangelism to the congregation. So I went to Malaysia. And since I had started working also with Four Seas Bible College at this time, I looked at Brother Peter Chen later on and I said, Brother Chen, we need you to be teaching at Four Seas Bible College. And he said, well, Brother Bland, 
I feel like I need more education if I'm going to be a teacher on a full-time basis. So we worked out to where he could come to the Memphis School of Preaching. He did an excellent job while here at the Memphis School of Preaching. And now then he has gone back to Singapore to teach in Four Seas Bible College and serves now as the president and the director of Four Seas Bible College uh, there in Singapore. And so that's the history of Brother Peter Chen. He's, of course, there now, perhaps even listening now. Uh, also, at one time, brother, the dean of academics was Brother Robbie Andrews until just recently, but he has come back. I spoke with Robbie just the other day. He's practicing medicine uh, over in Alabama. I believe he is right now. But he went over there and stayed a year. I will say this. We've got another brother. I can't yet mention his name. He's not from this area. But he, and the reason why I can't mention his name, I don't know if he's told the local congregation yet or not, but he is about to start raising money and he is going to take himself and his family and move to Singapore and teach uh, in Four Seas Bible College. So that's, uh, we need teachers. We need people who are willing to go there uh, and live and uh, have boots on the ground, in other words, in addition to our online instructors. And so he's going over uh, to do that. And uh, his, now you can live, they don't have, I don't know that they have a Walmart, but they have very expensive stores, places I can't shop. All right, uh, with my income. So you you do all right. Sister Pui Fun Chin, Brother Peter's wife, she's the secretary as well as the librarian, and they do an excellent job working together. Brother Eddie E. has been with the Jerome Church of Christ ever since its beginning. Brother Eddie E. was baptized a number of years ago by Brother uh, Ira Rice. And he serves as, as the, one of the, he served as the preacher for the Jerome Church of Christ. Uh, still serves as really one of the preachers. Brother um, Young Yao now is the uh, full-time preacher also for the Jerome Church of Christ. Brother Eddie and some other men serve as, as the serve as elders now of the Jerome Church of Christ. And so, but he still teaches uh, in the school. But he's getting on up in years, and eventually he will have to step down. So we need to replace our teachers. Here are the online instructors of those that I had the pictures of. Uh, Brother Tim Hayes teaches. Brother Glenn Tattersall, he teaches. Of course, he lives in Australia. Brother Philip Van Winkle, who's now over in Arkansas. Jason Hilburn, who's down in uh, Alabama. Brother John Diamante, a graduate of the School of Preaching. Uh, in fact, as you look at those teachers, four of those, by the way, are graduates of the Memphis School of Preaching, aren't they? Brother Jamie Long, who is uh, here with us, I didn't have his photograph uh, to put in here uh, in time to get this uh, together, but he has just started also teaching, and so over, uh, over there where he is, near Eldridge, Alabama, uh, they're supporting me in the work, so he is teaching. In fact, he had to leave last night in order to go teach his class, uh, because at 8.30, I guess it was, was the class time. Here, 8.30 at night was 9.30 a.m., in the morning. I said, well, you know, the world didn't end today because they're already in tomorrow over there. <laughs> and so that's encouraging. <laughs> I don't know how all that works. All right. <laughs> I actually missed the Lord's day one day. <laughs> I didn't realize I was going to lose a day. And I told the brethren in Singapore to pick me up on uh, Sunday night. At uh, such and such time, they went there, and I wasn't there. I got there on Monday. I said, well, I left Tokyo. It was Saturday. How would I get here Monday? Where did Sunday go? <laughs> they said, well, you crossed the international date line. So I assembled with a bunch of people on a plane. That's Lord's Day, I guess. I just missed it. So, but anyway, you have some of the students. I, I listed this, not necessarily just talk about their activities, but I just wanted you to see all the different countries that are represented in the student body there whether it be the Philippines or whether it's Malaysia, Singapore, uh, China, India, all of these then that come together and are trained. That's why I call it the mutual fund of evangelism, uh, to getting more money, uh, getting more, if you will, for your mission dollars in supporting these men. Here they have chapel every morning, and the men take the lead in the chapel, but they're uh, very uh, enthusiastic in their singing. They're very well prepared in their Bible class uh, uh, materials. And they're excited, of course, to be involved in the work of the Lord. 
They also have special courses. Sister Pui Fon taught a course on the Christian woman and to teach them how as women to live as Christians. Also, they have campaigns for Christ. For an example, way back in 2012, they went to Malaysia and notice all the people in Malaysia who had gathered to hear the gospel of Christ. Uh, great work. They're training the young people. I actually held a gospel meeting at the Lima Penn congregation a number of years ago, and all the young people, they took charge of that gospel meeting. They arranged all my meals, and the boy, did they feed you. They would feed you, uh, you know, for your lunch, then for your dinner, and then after the meeting, they want to take you out again. They did all of the announcements. They did the leading the singing, the prayers, all of the advertisements for the meetings. Thousands upon thousands of brochures were handed out. They did, an, they did a fantastic job. So they're training next generations, of course, is coming along. Also, the Four Seas College does a thing for the churches in the area. There are at least three sound congregations in Singapore, others in Malaysia. So they will have an extension program where they go in and teach. And here's what they've taught down through the years. In 2008, they did denominational doctrines for, they do it in a certain location where people would come and be taught. Premillennialism, Christian evidence. This is telling others also about Four Seas Bible College, but it's also branching out its tentacles, if you will, to teach and something, in fact, we could even be doing perhaps if we had the time of uh, doing some of these and some extension work, but we have enough on our plate seemingly already. So here are some. Then we also have other special courses that we come in uh, to the school, do them for the ladies. Fishers of Men course was taught. Uh, and in Malaysia, I believe Brother uh, Barry Hatcher just finished in Malaysia uh, doing another one. And I just noted on Facebook, one of the ladies from Malaysia said, don't ask, was it easy? Ask, was it worth it? And so they were encouraged by that program. Public speaking, special courses. And then, of course, graduation. We get there on a Friday evening usually or on Friday. I guess it's Friday morning at one after 1 o'clock Friday mornings when we get there. And no, yeah, Saturday morning, I believe it is, that we usually arrive there. And then on Saturday afternoon, have the graduation. They usually have us to participate in that. And so you can go back and just see some of the graduates down through the years. And I'm just flipping through that. But they want us to be a part of that. Uh, and many of the graduates, they asked me to give out the diplomas. And so these people going back to their countries... It just really does my heart good uh, when I look at these people and I think the, we just don't know the great good that's being done from these men and women as they go back and teach. We have the lectureship every year. Here, uh, of course, is uh, Brother Jonathan Burns who spoke this last year. But this backs up a ways. Uh, the first annual one, which was in 2008, you see the Asian Bible lectureship doesn't happen anymore. So we do the Four Seas Bible College lecture which brings in uh, a lot of people from Asia. And you can just see the, th the themes of it that we've had down through the years. I will build my church, the God of the Bible, which is very important in the Far East. Who is Jesus? And on and on we can go talking about then the sword and the spirit, making sure that we're teaching people about the Holy Spirit and how he operates, not through feelings, but rather through the word. I think this might be the last slide uh, if that was the 2017 uh, gathering or anyway, where people had gathered uh, from various parts of the Far East to come. This was the Saturday crowd. Some had already left, but I think last year we had maybe record attendance, uh, highest that we've ever had. But at any rate, that is what is going on at Four Seas Bible College, and uh, we're grateful to be a part of that, and hopefully then... Uh, it will continue down through the years and solicit your prayers, your support, because it does cost money uh, for, to get these people there. We don't support them once they leave the school, but we do try to support them while they're there because they come, as my mom used to say, they're probably poor as Job's turkey from some of the places from which they've come. And uh, if you didn't know it, Job's turkey was poor, okay? But at any rate, uh, they are supported while they're there, and then they go back home. Uh, in order to teach and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay, we're going to take another 10-minute break. Uh, we'll come in for the last session. Brother Roger Chambers uh, is going to tell us about what's happening in Malawi. He and his good wife just got back from there a few months ago. All right, so you're dismissed for 10 more minutes. <laughs>